Hey, what's up guys? Today I want to talk about recognizing problems versus uh, knowing what an improvement is. And sometimes when you get this confused, uh, or I see folks and companies get this confused a lot, so I want to cover that in today's video. Hey, if it's your first time here, my name is Chad and this is my YouTube channel and I teach folks how to use Lean and Six Sigma concepts to improve their business. And if that's something that you're interested in, then why don't you just hit that subscribe button and become part of the community. So we're talking about problems and um, problems and improvements so we need to understand and distinguish between the two what is the difference now before we can even do anything uh related to continuous improvement or problems so whether we're trying to do an improvement or a problem we need to have a standard okay and if we don't have a standard we can't even get started remember where there is no standard you cannot improve now what do you think this is if we take a deviation from standard um and in a positive direction and if you say that this is an improvement, then you're absolutely cor correct. This is a, an improvement. However, what about this negative deviation? Um, you know, this is a, if it's a negative deviation from standard, and you already know it's going to be a problem. So if you said problem, that's correct. Now, when a problem exists, we know that we've somehow messed up. We've deviated it from standard. We've fallen from grace. We need to get back to standard, and that's what this line represents getting from um, the problem back to the standard. When we make our improvement going from the standard, uh, making some sort of a positive deviation, we can create a new standard. And we see that now we have our standard number two here, and the first one is gone. And we can keep doing this, right? We can keep making new and better sta standards, and that's what continuous improvement is all about, and that's why Kaizans are very important. Um, Kaizans are very uh, structured ways of making these continuous improvement steps and you can make these uh, always improving on your standards. Now if we talk about problems there's a couple things we can look at. Number one, um, we can break it down by problem management and problem solving. Now there are two different, very different things okay and so we're going to take a look at those now. When we have a problem management issue the first thing we want to do is identify the problem. This is where you get out to the gimbal, you go to the actual place where the problem is occurring. You talk to people. You look at the problem. There may be a situation where you don't even have a problem. So that's step number two is you want to make sure that a problem exists. The reason is because if you don't have a problem, sometimes we confuse that and we're really not even a problem. Um, sometimes it's a situation where we can solve the problem quickly. And if it's a problem, we can, if it's just an issue like a fire that we can put out, then we can solve the problem quickly and move on with life. We don't really need to dig down any deeper. But sometimes... We can't do that, and that's when additional resources are needed, and that's when we need to figure out, you know, what stakeholders need to be involved. Is it all internal stakeholders because the problem is in house, or have we allowed some of these uh, problems to escape um, our our facility to get to a, the next customer? And so we need to determine that and and know how big the problem is and how many resources we need to bring in, and that's really determining the, determining the impact of what our problem is making, and so or or what or what the potential problems that uh, our specific problem that has escaped could be causing. So we need to understand that impact. So if this has happened, then we know we need to go into problem solving. So this is where we start with step one down here uh, where the green dot is, and that is contain the problem, right? We've got to stop the bleeding. At this stage, all that matters is to ensure that the problem is contained and not allowed to escape. So we don't want it to escape any further than it already is. If it has escaped our facility, then we need to contain it um, in both the locations of where we have it in our facility and then at our customer facility or wherever it is in transit maybe. But we need to contain it. That's what it's all about. We gather a team, right? We gotta pull the team members together, all the stakeholders together, and we say, look, now it's not just a problem management issue. We actually have a problem solving issue where we need to get down and start uh, finding out. Uh, what the problem is and in order to do that you have to define the problem and you have to define it in detail now i've talked a lot about this in the past on how to define a problem and this is one of the steps that a lot of a lot of people think they do well at but they don't because they want to jump right into the solutions or they don't really define the problem from a metric based standpoint we got to get down to what the actual problem statement is and the problem statement should contain metrics and those metrics should be how long the problem's been happening and how far we've deviated from the standard. And then you wanna start implementing some corrective actions that stop the production of the defective unit. So in other words, if you have a defect and you define the problem, you've you know contained the problem, now you have to implement some sort of corrective action that stops making bad parts. It could be some rework that it happens, um, some temporary rework that might happen, but in, in any case, you wanna make sure that you have some sort of corrective action. And then you can work towards uh, identifying the root cause. So you've, got, you've gotten the problem under control, you're not making any more of the problem, and now you can start 
to identify the causes. So you want to work with the team to identify the root causes, you know, why it was made, why was it allowed to escape. So you have two issues to solve there if it did escape. And if those two issues did happen, so why why did you make the problem? Then you have to countermeasure that and get to the root cause. And then if it escaped, you have to understand why it escaped and get to the root cause of that and actually countermeasure that as well. Um, and then you get to, the, you know, verifying their causes. Once you figure out what the causes might be, or the root causes, you can do a five why analysis, right? To make sure it was really the root cause. And that's where the uh, five whys are really powerful. And then you identify and implement countermeasures, right? You would choose the countermeasure that you're going to implement, implement the countermeasure, and then um, make sure that that countermeasure is doing what it's supposed to be doing and you're not seeing any more escapes. And then update the PFMEA. Risk analysis, this is where you define a plan, define and plan preventative action. So once you've contained the issue, you always have to, you know, no job's done until the paperwork is done. Um, now we have all these things um, electronically, but the, the principle is the same. You want to make sure that you go in and update your uh, failure modes and effects analysis to where you're saying, okay, we had a risk uh, that we that we judged this for in the past or greater this. If you know anything about PFMEAs, they are risk analysis tools and they measure severity, occurrence, and detection. You multiply those three things together and you get a risk priority number, an RPN number. And based on the RPN number, you can prioritize what you need to look at. If you hit a certain RPM number threshold, and then you need to implement counterme countermeasures to bring that down. So if you've gone back and looked at your PFMEA and said, you know, look, we had an occurrence of maybe five and we didn't have it ranked high enough because we had one escape, or maybe we had a detection ranked at a number seven and we allowed one to escape and we need to up these numbers. You go back in and you update your PFMEA on what countermeasures you implemented and then regrade that as a team. We don't do this individually, you do this as a team um, with the stakeholders and you regrade that PFMEA in that particular um, step, that process that failed and cause a problem and come up with a new RPN number. And then once you're done with that, you know, you can celebrate. You know, you always want to recognize a team and individuals for doing a lot of hard work. All this should be documented on like an A3, a 5P, or some sort of documentation that says, you know, very simply uh, from left to right or from top to bottom, you can read this document and see what the problem was, what the team did to fix the problem, and um, what countermeasures were implemented to, to make sure it never happens again. But then you can also recognize the team there. This should be shared with everybody in the company. You want to make sure that if other departments have had these issues, especially if you have uh, companies that are far flung, maybe you throughout the United States or in other countries, then you can share this. They can look at the tool, uh, the A3 or the 5P, and they can say, okay, we see the, what problem they have. And they can go out and implement the same type of countermeasure and make sure they don't have the same types of risk in their business. So anyway, just wanted to share this. Um, tool with you. So if we were to sum all of this up, problem solving, um, a problem is a negative deviation from standard. An improvement is a an improvement is a positive deviation from standard. And um, when we have a problem, we solve the problem and get back to standard. Now, when we improve, we document and sustain it, right? So if we can in improve the standard, we want to make sure we document it and then sustain that standard moving forward. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me that thumbs up. I appreciate you all watching and I'll see you in the next video.